What's up, everybody? My name is Kason. Welcome back to the WDL. This is season four, week four of the Heinler League, and these are how the standings shake out after three weeks heading into this fourth week here. We have a five-way tie in first place currently with five different teams at three wins, one loss, so nobody undefeated up to this point. But we have King, Don, Zeno, Impaler, and Catra all sitting at three and one. King currently with the best overall tiebreaker, but a lot of that stuff can change throughout the season as we have four teams currently between sixth and ninth. Uh, Snark, Odaiba Diver, Kayuma, and Lucian Rams all at a two and two record. Dr. Dickhead not too far behind with a one and three record, and Mogan Man in six eight as the final two teams at an 0-4 record. Guys, I will be transparent here heading into this battle, we, or heading into this week rather, we only have five battles. 6-8 um, basically hadn't responded throughout the week um, and unfortunately had to basically give a victory to King um, and basically the battle just didn't end up occurring. I actually just found out uh, recently, like this morning, that 6-8 has decided to drop out of the WDL entirely. So unfortunately, we will not see any more battles from him going forward. Um, obviously, he had a rough start to the season with that 0-4 start, uh, but just know over the next however many weeks, he will not have any more battles. So what I have decided to do for this league is that anybody who was going to play 6-8 I'm just going to award them with that win, that automatic win, kind of a disqualification type type win. And uh, I think what I might do next week is I'll change the standings so that it shows an extra win for all the teams. So it's not really misleading um, in terms of like how many battles somebody might have left. Uh, anyway, that'll be more clear next week probably, but just keep in mind, there will only be five battles this video. I do apologize for that, but I'm excited to get into them regardless, guys. So without further ado, let's check out the fights. Battle number one to kick off week four for the Heinler League. We've got the Knob Goblins versus Dirty Slushy. And it looks like Sephiroth is going to get his Mass Immune in waiting, ready to go. As Elda is not waiting for anything, Binding Javelin 3300 damage to kick off this fight. I think that drops healing power as well, I believe, as Ice Vitalization going to come out on the party. So Protect is there, and I will say Valade... Um, obviously he's going to use this buff naturally anyway, but Protect can be a pretty good tech against Sephiroth unless he has his soldier subjob on. Protect is one of those things get, that can normally mitigate his damage fairly well. As Immortal Spirit is here for Balo, so he's got courage. And the question for me is, are they able to kill this Sephiroth before the slime joins the fight? Because the positioning is a little odd here. We'll have to see if it works out. The Octoslash is going to hit, but it only is on Nasha and not a ton of damage here. Sephiroth is a typically pretty tanky fella, but can he resist this damage from Elda, who's normally a hard carry of his own? Binding Javelin for 4,100. Not only does it drop that healing power, it also immobilizes. So this could be pretty massive, depending on how much AP Sephiroth has left. I don't think it's a ton. Emergency Meditation for the Slime to keep himself alive, but with the Wind Veritas TMR coming out, this means that even a less AP will be there for Sephiroth. And the Sentinel for Balo, so no damage on the side of Dr. Dickhead except from Sephiroth. Currently sitting with 17 AP, he does land the Spirit Breaker. I wondered if he could even get damage off or if he was going to buff, but the standard attack from Eld is going to kill Sephiroth before the tank can even do his job. And now the question here is, for Dr. Dickhead to have even a remote chance in this fight, does Slime have Zing turned on to raise Sephiroth? It looks like he does. He's going for the channel. This needs to land, and then he needs to heal him for a chance for Dr. Dickhead. The raise does land, check mark number one complete, but does Elda hit the AoE on Sephiroth alongside the Balo? I imagine he has that AoE in store. No, he doesn't, he goes for the Binding Javelin, that is huge. This means that Sephiroth might actually get healed fully up. The healing power down is no longer there on Sephiroth, but he does move out of the way. Can Slime actually get in range to heal now is the question. Taunting Blade from Balo. So getting out of the way, Slime, do you have the range here, buddy, to heal up this Sephiroth is the question. He's going to try. He gets in range. Hustle Dance plus one is only there for 5,000, though. Interestingly enough, I'm wondering if Dr. Dickhead is running healing power trust stones, because that is the big thing for Slime to get his heal all the way up to basically 100% of somebody's HP bar. I don't think there's any healing power down anymore that's actually active. So that makes me think that he's probably not running those. As Barblizzara comes uh, out, Vitalizer, excuse me, 
Barbulas or Vitalizer comes out. Shadow Flare from the Sephiroth will deal 2870, dropping the CT. But this is actually looking a lot better for Dr. Dickhead than originally stated. That early Sephiroth death looked like it might be game over, but he managed to get him back up. Does Slime go for another heal here? He does not. He goes offensive. Fire damage onto the ice tank is 4k. And Nasha is almost down as the lines drain. Thankfully for Dr. Dickhead, does not kill the Slime. He manages to hang on. He's pretty weak to all damage types except for Slash, but Sephiroth is going to cut Nasha in half. She's doing her best. Aerith impression is now is a 3v2 advantage for the Knob Goblins. Is Valade in range for a full life? No, he is certainly not. Ice Vitalization going to come down again, but Elder with no AP, what can he do? Not a whole lot. And this is looking pretty good for the Knob Goblins at the moment. V Valade going to start channeling a spell. This time it's Dispel, removing hate. So I imagine that Balo probably doesn't have any left here. That actually could be pretty huge if Elda's able to essentially get rid of uh, Slime instead. The Hustle Dance plus one, though, does full heal Balo, and now I'm wondering, maybe there was still healing power down, as that did seem to heal Balo for full health. So I'm thinking he probably does have those Trust Stones, and I probably just missed something. I thought the healing power down was gone because Sephiroth got re-raised, but maybe that wasn't the case. So, Zantetsuken coming out from the Odin Esper. This is a guaranteed hit. The map effect is also going to deal uh, a lot of positive effects here for Dr. Dickhead and the Knob Goblins. But Elda sitting back, he is ready to deal some damage. Only 12 AP, though. It's looking good for the Doctor. Only 12 actions left. Valade is going to walk in. Does he go for a heal or does he go for a full life? It is a full life. This brings back Nasha. Hold on. This fight is actually very close now. With 10 actions left, Gigantic Rockfall, Earth Attack Resistance down isn't going to matter, but it does change the map effect in Mogan Man's favor, which might, I think means Dr. Dick had no longer gains that um, increased damage factor. So this fight just turned on its head. This looked like a guaranteed win almost for Dr. Dick had. Now he's actually find, fighting an uphill battle. This is just a battle of attrition. Basically, nobody has enough AP to do anything. Binding Javelin comes through, kills the slime. The support is down in what looks like a fight that was almost guaranteed for the Knob Goblins. I think Dirty Slushy might just be able to pull off now. The Curata is going to full heal the tank with only four actions left, only 18 AP. Aeolian Onslaught's just not going to do it here. And Mogan Man is on the precipice of picking up his first win in the WDL. That standard attack and the Blood Sword heal back doing basically nothing as Elda is going to try and pierce through both units. And that's it, guys. We go to turn with five units still left alive. Mog and Man and Dirty Slushy pick up the victory. That was a really interesting fight. The positioning, I don't think, obviously was ideal for either team. Um, I don't think if you're Mog and Man that you want Elda running forward with a Binding Javelin. And if you're Dr. Dickhead, I don't think you want Sephiroth walking forward without really getting a whole lot of buffs off either. So I don't think that ended or started off how either player wanted. Obviously ended up working out for Mog and Man though. And man, GG's to both players. Congrats on the first win to Dirty Slushy. Heading into battle number two here, guys. Dawn is running a soul-based comp, 140 of his cost, used up by this fella here, but he is a beast. Will it pay off here as that Wind Veritas team are coming out from the other side for Kayuma and Seas? And again, it is Inquisition versus Seas here as an Oceanic Protection buff could be fairly useful against the Miranda. Not much against the other side is that Wind Veritas TMR. Obviously, we are seeing everywhere in these PvP fights. It is an S tier TMR, in my opinion. It's just very, very strong. This full Red Mage composition from Kayuma has not lost yet. I believe it is 2 0 on the season, and this is heading into the third time they're going to use it. Crush Armor Plus going to hit for 3,300 damage onto the Lisette as one of the uh, support options for the soul is here. And honestly, tanking up damage quite, quite well. So, uh, this Lisette is doing her job fully as soul is the hyper carry on this comp. Sage's Wisdom going to come out. So he's already got a huge physical barrier and he's got a bunch of really nice options, a bunch of really nice buffs here. As Surges is channeling his spell, what is this? Is this like Light Veil or something? I'm so confused. It's Curative Prayer, which removes all debuffs and heals for 1,000, barely anything of a heal. But Surge is uh, trying to look out like Yuna or Shells out here. Very, very interesting. As Moran is going to start channeling a spell, Tri Slasher comes through for the Lucio, though, doing a ton of damage. And the Lisette is down. This is now a 3v2 advantage. Water Good Dispeller comes through. Very nice by Dawn. No sleep. 
probably prepping for this it looks like as pyre of chaos and destruction deals really good damage to these two units we've seen orlando be very tanky against aoe attacks as the leaping assault comes out but those double uh, target single attacks can be really, really uh, useful against him. As the Crush Armor Plus is coming out, Orlando's basically out of AP. And we've seen Thunder God basically take down King Bradley 1v1, but he is certainly not doing as well in this fight. Big old damage onto the Surge as though means it's a 1v3 advantage for Seize and Kayuma. Soul, you are an absolute monster. It is time to start putting your 140 cost it's time to start pushing that 140 cost around here. Can he get it done? Deflagrating heat is big damage. Kills the Orlando. Lands the poison on Miranda. Almost kills Lucio. Scintillating Eclipse, though. 1900 damage. There's no more physical uh, HP barrier here on the side of Soul. And Dispelling Thrust barely takes out Soul. That actually could be the difference in that fight here. If he were to live that, I think he kills Lucio on that next turn. And that poison damage from Miranda honestly might have done enough that Soul could have killed him on the next turn as well. So Dispelling Thrust just doing barely enough to kill that Soul. Huge, huge for Kayuma here as Soul might have been able to turn that around. But heck of a fight and congratulations to the third win in the row for this Red Mage team and Seas. Fight number three here, guys. We've got Lucian Rams's Lone Shadows versus Polarity, coached by Zeno. And we've got the two purple and black teams heading up against each other. Two teams who started out of the gate hot as hell have since cooled down a little bit. But one of these teams looking to back get back on that win streak here. It looks like Prayer of Resolute Oh, is coming out from the Sylvie. We've got that regen already for the Shadowlinks on Ice. And the double Shadowlinks team is something that we've seen before from Lucian Rams as the dodge comes through from Shadowlinks. But this full Mace team is something we've seen from Xeno as well. As Ildira's Theorem is going to come out from the name I already mentioned here. As I think this is 400, maybe it's 500 CT, but it's a lot of CT regardless of what it is on Xeno's comp. Allows that turn order to be ridiculous as it looks like the Winter Wrath is going to start going here. Ildira going to walk forward with a level 4 water gut, a little bit of damage, going to knock down that counter rate, which can be pretty big, as Funneling Spearfall does good damage to the backline as well, and a chain here, looks like Katia with the Spellblade sub going for, I think that was a taunting spell? If that was a taunting spell, I'm not entirely sure that's what Xeno wants, as now there is hate on Katia. Instead of any sort of hate down, it's a positive, which is not great. The Limit Break does come out from Winter Wrath, but it gets dodged by the MR Shadow Links here. Xeno was in a really good HP advantage, but the Shadow Tether does land the stop onto Katia. And yeah, that Taunting Spell not exactly working out for her here as the Skating Links Limit Break comes out. This is such a cool animation. Comes out 4,700 damage, dropping that Dark Resist, and that Katia... That taunting spell is not what she wanted to do here, as now it is down to a 2v2. And do these units for Xeno have the accuracy to hit? The height 2 holy is going to come out. It gets dodged. This is not a guaranteed hit, just like regular holy. And Dispelling Violet comes through again. Shadow Links on Ice barely lives it. Is that enough to turn this fight in Lucian Rams' favor? Shadow Tether comes down again. Another stop again and this is one of the units throughout two seasons for lucian rams has just been popping off for him it is his favorite unit but mr shadow links has often been the mvp of his fights will she be it again or does xeno turn this around punishment it comes through shadow links on ice is down it is now a 1v2 i expect shadow links to clean up this odira she will do just that and now the question comes in guys can this winter wrath actually hit the shadow links if she can she might just one shot her shadow tether this time does not land the stop does drop the unit attack resist though i expect winter wrath to live at least one more hit magical strike comes out for 7300 but shadow links barely lives it 127 hp remaining gonna go for a fourth shadow tether and this time the third stop lands you've got to be kidding me this shadow links is popping the hell off and solo carrying this fight she has stopped all three units on Zeno's team. She barely lived, and she's going to chain up with herself multiple times, taking out the Winter Wrath. Holy shit, ladies and gentlemen, that fight was absolutely nuts. Man, if Winter Wrath had 127 more damage on her attack, Zeno would have won that. But unfortunately for him, Shadow Lynx lives it and just chain stopping units. Holy cow, this OG MR unit, one of the faves of many players back in the day. Uh, just coming through for Lucian Rams. Hell of a fight, and congratulations to Lone Shadows.
Battle number four is Arise from the Crashes versus Three-Legged Pants, and we have a full magic DPS composition coming out from Snark here. And Impaler is rocking a double strike plus Dario team. We'll have to see who gets the better end of this deal here. As Edward Elric, what is he going to go for? It's going to be resist magic. So obviously seeing that giant magic stat on the other side, opts in for that Spellblade sub uh, buff. We'll see if it pays dividends for him, as it looks like Marguerite's going to channel a quick, and so Gargus is ready to go right out of the gate. Can he pop a Wind Lash from here? He does have incredible range, but it looks like he is just barely out of it. So unfortunate for Snark that that Quicken is not going to pay off. The Keen Blade goes from Dario, but his double Quicken, that is not uh, damage or anything like that from the Skahal. Another Quicken comes out. Gargus is ready to deal damage as long as he lives this hit from Edward. I expect him to live at least one hit. Can he find a massive wind lash? Adamantine Pillar comes out for 5,400. He will live it. How much does this do? 3,500, and I think about the same to Dario. Does drop the AoE resist on both, but Draining Seal will kill Gargus and heal Dario back up to full. And this could get a little awkward as the Quicken comes out from Marguerite just before Skahal's turn was going to happen. What is he going to go for? Is he going to now Quicken Marguerite? Or is he going to go for some sort of offensive spell? Oh my goodness, guys. This is going to be a bit rough as they were just going to keep quickening each other. Here's another quicken. Quicken's on, quicken's on, quicken. Skahal might be in range to deal damage now, though. Maybe the quicken chain does actually work here as Ed is going to go for another damage. Debilitating counter will nerf that damage just a little bit, though, as 5200 happens. What can he get done here? Thundergo Disposer onto the Dario is 5200, but not nearly enough as much you would like to see here. Mariluk goes for the crowning chakra to top off the team and this buff uh or this heal ability from Mariluk is really really underrated if chakra wasn't enough like already good for monks this is an expanded aoe and for that is just incredibly oppressive here as dario takes out the skahal this is now a 3v1 advantage for impaler and uh I got pretty damn hyped about all of these quickens, but unfortunately for Snark, aka Turk Reno here, I don't think it's going to be enough. Fyraga is going to come out for 1500 damage from the Marguerite, and eventually Impaler's units will be able to scale onto the other side of this map as the Magic Barrier comes out from Dario. Mariluk is going to follow suit here. And if I had a speed up option, guys, I would probably use it here as I think we know what's about to happen. Unless Marguerite, oh, wait a minute, they're all stacked up. Can she find a triple Berserk? If she could do that, that could make this fight really interesting here. Adamantine Pillar comes out for 5,600. Tell me she can find a triple Berserk. No, it's a Fyraga. Oh my god, she goes for the Fyraga instead of the Wildstar Incantation. I thought that would have been really cool to see. And maybe she could have somehow brought it back if she did that. But she doesn't go for it. Surge Strike comes through, kills the Marguerite. And congratulations to Impaler on his fourth win of the season. Looking really, really impressive through four weeks. But GG's to both players. And shout out to Snark for the really cool Quicken shenanigans. All right, guys, final fight of the video. We've got a banger for you. We've got Odaiba Diving School versus Sanrock. Odaiba versus Catra. And it looks like Renoa, Tifa, and Ravis on the side of Catra. And it looks like Renoa has that uh, Grimoire Keeper sub job to give herself a physical HP shield. Might be a good call from Catra's side. Although I will say, Alaya does have a barrier break in her kit. Whether or not she gets to use it is the question. We've seen these double gunner units put in some work before from Odaiba's side. But right there, that spread blast gets soaked really really well by Renoa. incredible range from the rugia but he now only has 10 ap and this could look pretty good for capture in a minute here if this continues this way immortal spirit is here for the titus one thing i will shout out is that titus does not start the fight with initial hate looking at the movement i think he only moved two spaces which means he's probably running bow tie i could be wrong about that it might have been three movement well we'll have to see i think that typically odaiba does try and run that 3200 damage from the limit break from Renoa though is soaked quite well by Titus. And Rugia with 10 AP. Is he in range to standard attack? He actually goes for Break Slug. Only 10 AP for 9,500 damage. You'll take that trade any day of the week. As Eli is going to follow up, I expect a barrage from this angle. No, she can reach the sharpshoot. That range is wild. And I will say, guys, these two gunner units, I think gunner units are a little bit outdated in general in the pace of the game. But Odaiba has been putting in damn work with them. Holy cow. Rugia with 0 AP now goes for the Domain of Earth. 
but he's going to walk way the hell forward. I don't think that's where he wants to be. He's put in his work already, but this is a bad spot for him as Tifa might just be able to find a big old AoE on him. Focus Strike is going to one-shot him. He is down for the count, and Rugia did a lot of damage, uh, but he is done, so and Aliyah is going to have to carry this from here as Titus does not have a ton of HP remaining. Rending Tri Shot comes through, breaks that barrier if there was still one remaining. I'm not entirely sure, and breaks her HP bar. And this fight keeps swinging on its axis. It looks like it was very one-sided for Odaiba, then Catra, now Odaiba. Can Catra bring it back his second time here as Omni Strike is not enough to proc that courage for Titus. He's still hanging on strong here. 44 AP for Aliyah means she should be able to deal really good damage to this Tifa. Sharpshoot comes out for 10,000 damage. My goodness, what are these two gunner units eating? This is wild as Titus is going to follow this up with a saintly fortress because apparently Tita, uh, Tifa excuse me, is damn evasive, which means there should be another sharpshoot coming through for Aliyah. She's too damn speedy. She gets the kill for 12,800. So not only is she hitting like a truck, but there are damage up nodes or something like that it's probably realistically the genji glove is my guess but almost three thirteen thousand hp that might be a record for wdl and uh congratulations to odaiba diver for putting in work again with this double gunner unit or double double gunner team it has been really really impressive all right guys all of these battles done we have four weeks down four weeks remaining for the heinler league here We've got two teams tied for first currently. King, coach of Kansas City Killers, and Impaler, Impaler excuse me, coach of Three-Legged Pants. King obviously didn't battle this week, like I said, due to the 6-8 uh, dropout disqualification, but both teams currently are sitting at a 4-1 and one record right now. Odaiba, Diver, Dawn, Lucian Rams, Catra, Kayuma, and Zeno. That is a lot of names. A little bit of a tongue twister. Six different teams. Three wins, two losses. Guys, top six make the playoffs. The fact that all the way down to eighth place are three and two or above, this is kind of wild uh, to see how many teams are doing really well up the top here. But based off the tiebreakers as it stands, Odaiba is alone in third, Zeno is alone in eighth, and everybody else is essentially tied for fourth. But again, that matters so little probably by the end of the season. Um, that I'm not sure how much really we need to look into that. Just know that all these teams are three and two and really, really tight in the standings here. Snark is only one game behind though with the two win and three loss record. Arise from the crashes is trying to arise into that top six at some point. And Mogan Man this week picking up his first win of the season. Coach of Dirty Slushy picking up that win over Dr. Dickhead who is currently sitting in 11th place with the Knob Goblins. So both of those teams currently sitting at one and four. And 6-8, I will list for now as a 0-5 record. I think next week I will probably just remove the team from the standings as um, he did drop out of the league. And like I said, next week I'll probably just add an extra win uh, to the win column for every team who hasn't played 6-8 yet as... That's really the most fair way that I can come up with. Um, to have certain teams play one less game just doesn't feel right to me. Uh, so that I am basically just going to award a win to everybody who hasn't played him yet. The nice thing about it was that he had started 0-4 anyway. So that there's no like weird loss that somebody already preemptively had. I think you guys kind of understand where I'm going with it. But regardless, even with 11 teams uh, going here on out for the Heinler League... I'm excited to see how it plays out. Four more weeks to go, and it should be a good time, guys. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, we should have a couple more coming out this week. It should be a good time. So thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.